Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome you to Attune into the Voice of Mother Earth, How to Hear Her and Follow Her Call Global Conference, where through inspiring interviews, we are invited to explore real actions we can take as individuals to deepen our connection to Mother Earth, while at the same time discovering a way to our truer selves. My name is Maya Zaharov, and I'm your host and producer of Attune into the Voice of Mother Earth Summit. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you and to thank you for taking your time to be here with us. Today, I'm thrilled to be here with Anaya Sophia. Welcome, Anaya. Hey, my love. It's, it's fantastic to be here at this time. Yeah, it's really good to be here with you. So, Anaya, let me introduce you just a little bit. Anaya Sophia is a mystic, a storyteller, and an author of revelatory wisdom. She teaches workshops throughout the world and is best known for creation of Sacred Body Awakening. Her recent book, Fierce Feminine Rising, Heal from Predatory Relationships and Recenter Your Personal Power reveals a map, a template that she was given as she wrote the book. It is a map of our absolute awakening, our return to the heart, believing in uncompromising truth, reckless beauty, and courageous love knowing that life is worth more than money, that there is nothing greater, nothing more important, nothing more sacred than protecting the sacred spirit deep within all life. With whatever time we have left, Anaya is more committed to address head on as many challenges that stand in our way and to ensure the birth of the golden age in our footsteps. Anaya lives in La Citan region of South France with her beloved husband, Pete Wilson. Together, they run a particularly magical B&B in an enchanted forest where individuals and groups come and stay. Anaya is able to conduct baptism, marriage, as well as divorce and death ceremonies at her home. So Anaya, I'm uh, intrigued by your topic today, which is nature should look after her own. And uh, to begin, would you please share why did you choose this topic and specifically what is the title of your interview point toward? Well, when, when we first exchanged emails, because I live in France, I'm a little bit ahead of this current coronavirus global crisis we're all in. So when you said, hey, what would you like to talk about? It was really obvious for me because this was truly coming our way. And of course, now we've been in quarantine for 10 days and, and you guys are starting to, to feel the tide of that coming your way. So I thought this is, this is absolutely what we must be speaking about together. And uh, it just feels so resonant and so, so alive, a subject that's so alive within me. Definitely, yeah. So uh, I guess, how can nature look after her own? Nature can look after her own if we realize we are part of nature. And when we realize we are part of nature, we will look after her. So this saying, nature will look after our own, it's not for us humans to go, oh wow, mother nature's gonna wrap us in her arms and we'll be totally safe. Mother nature shall look after her own because we are also mother nature. We will take a fierce stand against anything that threatens her from the tiniest little ant to the whole of the Amazon forest. So now that we're in this situation, this quarantine, this is like the perfect backing into the corner. For us in France, we've got 30 days, we're not allowed to leave the home. For not even the majority, for most, this is like a, a hair pulling situation. Oh my God, I can't go down the pub, I can't go to the club, I can't go shopping. And of course, these people are climbing the walls and absolutely can't keep still. But for us, this can be seen as a very precious opportunity. Once we master that mind and stop it, you know, going into extreme chaos and confusion and fear coming from the news headlines, we can, I believe, take this time 
to really, when it's time, when it, the curfew has been lifted, to literally rise and kings, as kings and queens of our absolute sovereignty and domain. Yeah, 100%. It definitely I do believe like this that. is a stage. This is a theater. What we're watching on CNN and BBC and France 24, brilliant theater. I believe the virus is real. I'm not gonna say where I think the virus comes from, but I'm sure you can read between the lines what I'm saying. But as for the hyped up endless newsreels, I think this, this is theater, it's being done on purpose. Yeah, it's a, it's a strange, surreal time, really. Um, uh, and really, it, it, like you said, you know, your mind can just run wild with, oh my God, this, oh my God, that, should I do this? Should I buy all the rice in the world? I don't to feed my family for a year. <laughs> should I take all the money I have and keep it as cash or should I not? Like all these, the mind goes crazy. Well, in reality, this is also an opportunity to go deep within, to calm down and, and, and realize what, what is true for us in this moment as, as, a, as, a, as in the world. We're not, although we're isolated separately and alone, but together we're experiencing the same thing in the world so yeah Absolutely. this is this is a perfect perfect situation for all the nations all the colors to come together because this is a unified experience we're in right now Absolutely. all of these crazy ideas we might have about the chinese the iranians the people of color whatever whatever we've inherited you know the narrative um here, here we go we have one situation right now that is going to it will unify us yeah absolutely hopefully this is the the lesson we will carry out instead of pointing fingers and you know letting our shadow sides rule us and saying such and such brought the virus or such people of such an origin and nationality, religion, whatever, mm. are more contagious or they're the ones at fault and pointing the finger. So hopefully the larger, the love will prevail, so to speak. I do believe that there is going to be a huge revealing process that brings about the end of this. It, over the coming years, we've seen, you know, most of our spiritual and yogic teachers fall from grace so there's been an expose in that part of the community sure. there's been an expose in hollywood the pedophiles um there's been an expose uh, uh, julian assange um and snowden so there's just one section left <laughs> <laughs> and that could be the political that could be the political part yeah wonderful. and maybe that's what this is all about yeah so because things were starting to be seen and questioned and suddenly this appears out of nowhere suddenly this virus sweeping the planet yeah if we can just hang in there with our faith with our light with our courage mm -hmm and know that there are others bringing this to the surface. It's all gonna be known. Yeah, 100%. And then the whole thing gets seen in a completely different light. Absolutely. Mm. So in these times, do you have like any, I guess, specifics or suggestions how we can look after like, how we can look after our own how do we center ourselves during these times absolutely we need some good energy running through us um me being british i love humor laughter so i'm making sure i dip into a little bit of ricky gervais every now and again <laughs> just for that <laughs> silliness um, um the free gift i'm going to be giving is something i'm doing at the moment which is like a sacred marriage with, with my hands, you'll get the, the full download with the free gift. But basically 
it's weaving together intimately at the level of the heart with plenty of self-love and, and self-value and affection. The part of us that knew that something like this would happen. And that is precisely the reason we're here. We've incarnated for this reason. So that part is like, you know, feeling probably victorious and like, yay, finally it's happening. And then, of course, there's the other part of us that is absolutely confused and shattered and frightened by the pace at which this is unfolding and afraid of our elderly parents and are they going to make it and our children and all of our loved ones that we are seemingly separated from at the moment. So it's about bringing these two parts together in a really heartfelt, embodied meditation, which will bring you into um, such a sense of grounded and honest peace. So it's, not, it's certainly not wishful thinking. It's not pie in the sky. It's a real like, ah, oh, yeah, 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 okay. Okay, continue on. <laughs> So we need lots of um, practices like that, I feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So th this, is, this is part of the inner work we can do. But I guess at the, at the same time that we're trying to, in this time that they were isolated and trying to find center within ourselves, how, do we, how can we look after the natural world? Because where I live, it's kind of easy-ish. Um, you know, we're in the forest. But let's just speak to people, for instance, in their apartment in New York City or LA. Have you got a plant? Have you got something natural in your apartment? Then you would, I, what I would do is I would come into a hands-on somatic touch of that plant and, and do my inner work with that green leaf, with that green stem, with that brown soil. So I'd actually, you know, ask to merge with it and, and invite it to merge with me. And know that what we're holding is so very, very precious. And actually strike up a communion, a felt union with this beautiful plant, flower, carrot <laughs> whatever it is we've got growing in our apartment and 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 just start up a dialogue through this plant we can connect absolutely to the real essence of mother earth mother gaia yeah i think 100 percent. i mean you don't need much of course, it's nice if you do have much, if you have a whole enchanted forest in your backyard. I mean, but I mean, yesterday we were just, I was planting tomatoes with my sister. She came with pots and bags of dirt and it was really so much fun. And just that experience was really grounding, you mm. know, and, and at the same time, it's almost like being outside, although you're just in your backyard and, and, and you're working with the earth, you're working with nature. But really, just like you said, you can establish like a real connection to just one plant, one flower, one, one plant and receive so much wisdom and uh, transmissions, just so much just so much wisdom through it yes. by, by you connecting to it yes. daily as, as often as you need, as much as you need, really, it will carry us through. And in fact, I mean, I'm sure you're aware, like there is studies have been done that plants are being affected by of the words that we say to it and our mm -hmm. energy and how we relate to it, it directly. Um, influences its growth and how much it's thriving so uh, i can see definitely how this activity can bring you much needed calm and um mm. it, it's a rep reciprocity type mm. type thing mm. that brings you calm and I'm, I'm sure some kind of magic is happening in the natural world at large not just yeah this plant 
you could even become even more subtle if you you know you have no plants but you have breath every inhale will be carrying some kind of subtle essence of the particular season we're in you know like for for us here now we're breathing in a spring breath you know maybe we can't smell it with our nose but we can know that within this breath this oxygen that's all around us we have the beginnings of the flowers just starting to to move out of their bud and into their blossom and maybe for those in the southern hemisphere you you're going to have a subtle sense of autumn leaves turning gold becoming brown um harvest the smell of harvest so if all you have is your breath that breath has come from whatever is your natural world whether it's forests deserts lakes and again that's another beautiful way to just travel on the breath what is it that nature brings to me every time i inhale what's actually encoded in that breath. Yeah, it's like the, the nature goddess comes yeah. in. It's especially, yeah, for us in the Northern Hemisphere, yeah, the, the springtime is here. Yeah. And she doesn't care about the virus. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, I've noticed, I don't know if it's my imagination, but I've noticed it two mornings now. The birds are in abundance. So the birds are getting closer to the house and getting closer to me. So it's like, you know, maybe when there's loads of humans running around, getting in and out of their car, slamming doors, the birds are like, well, we're out of here. <laughs> but because there's none of that noise, they're yeah. like, whoa, they're getting really close. <laughs> and they seem, I don't know, they seem confident. They they know there's nothing to fly away for. Yeah, they yeah. definitely have that sense, a very clear sense, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I was thinking, just also from partially reading, even when uh, it started in, in China, uh, the fact that, I think just because everything was slowed in, down, the production, the flights, you know, all the human activity, like the mind yeah. activity was slowed down. And yeah. uh, I think nature is just resting from us. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So we have, that, we have, we have in, in France, we have a hunting season, unfortunately. Um, and we were just musing today, myself and Pete, that yay, the animals can roam freely. There's no one in the woods with a shotgun. Wonderful. And we actually saw a great big giant stag today, really, really close up. And I was, you know, feeling in my heart, you know, you don't even have to run. We don't have no guns. You, you know, you have a completely wonderful month ahead of you how how wonderful and hopefully you know it depends how long all this lasts some changes might be permanent you know one of the i was pete and i we were going to do the santiago de compostela in april and may this year and uh i was walking on behalf of the humane society to bring an end to the Yulin dog meat festival in, in China. Uh -huh. Well, I don't think there's going to be a Yulin dog meat festival this year. And you know what? Because of the great hoo-ha of, you know, this came from the wet market in China. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. There is a very high chance that there will be no more Yulin dog meat festival. Yeah, I hope so. I Wouldn't sure hope so. Great. Yeah. And maybe like this will, hopefully this will let us learn or, or, or help us recognize on the global scale that how intimately we're connected to nature. Yes. So as long as, 
is there's one thing goes goes off that I'm not sure how to link it yet, or maybe if, if the scientists will be able to link it, but it seems like when there's fires in the Amazon, when there's fires in Australia, when there's floods and such and such, and crazy weather events, and you know, mm -hmm. global mm -hmm. warming is happening, and so, and we can't just close our minds and close our hearts and our eyes and go as business as usual, literally, business, business, business. And yes. elect our leaders, you know, in in different <laughs> in different large countries, like I'll just say, like U.S. and Brazil, you know, and 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 almost like a demented father figure, and we're still doing business, business. So hopefully, we'll be able to recognize a link that when you go like this, we harm ourselves, yeah, literally, physically, very palpably. It's yeah. happening. I can't, I, I'm not, you know, I can't show you how, w w what exactly happened, but when you have a whole, uh, our world, our planet, and then we keep doing what we're doing, it responds in ways, maybe not on purpose trying to punish us, but she's the live intelligence. This is what happens. It's just yes. what happens. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> so... Mm. yeah hopefully hopefully it'll come to light and her 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 shakti her her spirit will be recognized and honored like we need to so mm. i just i wanted to ask you like do do you want to bring the concept maybe of of the dakini oh yeah playing with the role of her is at this time Absolutely. I've just been writing just before our talk, actually, about the Vajra. So the Vajra is the, the lightning bolt. It's this mystical, symbolic, it, in paintings, it's, it's an actual item. But obviously on the inside, it's a power, it's a force, and it strikes through everything at full Flip in force, all illusion, all dishonesty, all fear, all darkness. And the Dakini wields this. <laughs> so, yes, it's a physical item and it's also a quality inside of her. So, the Dakini goes to the dark places on purpose. She loves it. This is exactly where she wants to go and she goes there undercover she goes there as a seeming agent of darkness herself and once she gets to the epicenter of the chaos of the war of the famine whatever it is we're dealing with she will literally strip off her masquerade and reveal what she truly is which is the purest bodhisattva compassion and love you ever did see so you think that the dakini is like this badass feminine force you know like a kali ma she's she's come to do business but actual fact the actual essence of the dakini is like a the purest kuan yin um, so th that is another aspect of work we could be doing on the inside. We could be taking all of this chaos and sort of going there in a mad, chaotic Kalima dance. You could use the, the medium of dancing. Just absolutely get yourself in a mad frenzy, something that matches the energy that we're getting at the moment through the newsreels. And then once you really feel, oh my God, I am authentically as mad as the, as the headlines, <laughs> then you just stop. And then you show your real face, which is a beautiful, heartfelt, endless, infinite well of love. Now that takes a lot of alchemy. <laughs> You've got to be able to do it on a dime, absolutely beautifully, su supremely, and authentically. So 
So that would be the work of the Dakini in this moment. And that means that there's no hate for Trump. There's no hate for Mr. Chinese president. There's no hate for Corona. There's no hate for anything. Because if you've got just a little bit, you, you haven't done the work. So when it's time to show the real face, you are a radiant, compassionate being. Yeah, I, I, I love know, listening life. to the love story. Stuff like that. I love it. <laughs> I love it too. It's 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 so powerful. Yeah. Just and how you describe the the lightning bolt. It's a physical thing, but yeah, it's something that's supposed to you're supposed to just let through. I think inside yeah. of you cleanse you to shake you awake. Yes. To be in that moment. Yes. And then to bring your mature adult um, and also kind of channel to channel your energy to the to the most divine to absolutely to true self and and yeah. what to do with it really yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's a wonderful concept to work with and of course you're doing it for you but equally you're doing it for everyone you just got to go there. You got to go there fully in the chaos and fully in the compassion for everybody. You know, for your mum and dad, for your daughter, for you, for your neighbors, for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. And I like that you, you basically mentioned the, the, the way to it, you know, just like you said, you know, you, you don't have to have a, a deep meditation for 10 hours if you do wonderful that's great yes. but just yes. how you can take that moment like you said if you're angry and just just dance just to whatever way to 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 get it to let that ball through you to to that's let it go it. deeper and and bring it forth <laughs> to experience yeah. it and then i think yeah. just the yeah. the light side comes comes forth and i love that you said that she wears a disguise <laughs> <laughs> well her, i mean her appearance is is of a dark form but that's because she can get into the darkness so let's just say there's a few dark guardians you know like you would going into a nightclub hey you what do you want you want in Ah, oh, okay. So, so it's like as the Dakini approaches the epicenter of chaos there will be uh things that she'll have to get past but because she looks and is resonating you know like a dark agent everyone's like yeah okay off you go on your way <laughs> and that's what I mean by once she gets to the epicenter then she discards the masquerade you know she throws off her black leather or something <laughs> And then underneath is this like sheer white dress or something. <laughs> yeah. That's spectacular. That's wonderful. Yeah. Do you have any, uh, like, um, do you have any other examples? Like I, I love like to come, to come through dance, you know, how it comes through, but I, I almost like, I can see how we can identify, you know, with, with the darkness and anger and, but how do you not get stuck there? You know what I mean? How do you bring yourself forward in yeah. your best well, way? My, my safekeeping is music. So I literally have three tracks on a playlist. So I've got my dark track. I've got my light track. And then I've got my sort of like graceful aftermath. So I make a rule to myself, when the dark track is over, you jolly well switch <laughs> to compassion. And because I, I'm a, such a lover of music and dance, so by the time that beautiful piece comes, it just strikes at my heart and the love within me takes over. Because, you know, I could be doing this dance, particularly at a time like this, with a sense of how dare you send humans into such chaos and forgetting their true self or separating them from the natural world. You know, that's enough to really like start rising the bikini within. 
but I, I have that agreement with myself. Once that track is over, you switch. Yeah, so it's, it seems like it's us being conscious of, of what's happening. So you let yourself go as deep and dark as you want. That's right. But like you said, you make yourself a promise, like we need to come out. Now, yes. this, when, when you've had enough, now is the time to come out. You have yes. to come out. Yes. Otherwise, um, you're not bringing forth <laughs> anything to the world and you're yes. doing damage to yourself. Yes. To we, you could also start off with a lovely prayer, maybe to Kali or the Black Madonna or, or, or whoever, you know, a, a Takini. Yeah. And you'd say something like, keep me safe. Let it be your force that flows through me. Let, let this be your divine dance of destruction that flows through me. Yeah, you're basically Keep me just safe from, you know, getting lost in it. And I must mm -hmm. say, every time I've prayed to Kali in that manner, she always keeps the work safe and pure and authentic. Yeah, I, definitely so. I, yeah, we just have to have this trust, trust in her. <laughs> Yeah. And her intelligence and in all of in all her wonderful forms, a myriad of them, really, all of them. Mm -hmm. she, whatever form you feel closer to to reach out to, she, it will come and save you. It will hear you. Yes. Eventually, it will show you a way forth <laughs> or a way out. Oh man! Sure. Yeah. So I guess th this is this is how we work with nature, right? This is yes. the one yes. way we can work with nature. Absolutely. Women, priestesses have always danced. It's not because um, they just want to dance. <laughs> when a priestess is dancing, this is one of the most powerful ways of doing her work. Dancing, we think dancing is something that happens at the nightclub or something that happens at Burning Man. But it's actually, it's like the shaman. She is taking on energy and quality and expression through the body. It's, a, it's an incredible um, journeying and alchemizing tool. yeah absolutely that's <laughs> yeah that's true this is this is a, a, one of the deeper ways of commuting with nature of and wherever your feet are whether they're on the ground or a third floor apartment or a 22nd floor apartment our mother can feel our footsteps yeah. So if we're, you know, bashing around, <laughs> she will feel our little feet tapping out a rhythm on her ground. Yeah. Yes, yes. I've, I've heard somewhere or, or many places that one thing that is lacking right now is, is drumming and dancing upon the earth. Mm. It doesn't mm. sound like I guess a big deal in itself, but um, I think I think it does in a way because just like you mentioned, if if she feels the tapping of little feet on the third level of the little apartment, then what happens when lots of us gather and intentionally, you know, focus on our energy and we sing to her and we praise her and we take that energy and give it back to her and we, like you said, we alchemize the absolutely we alchemize this this you know this this energy and 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 um basically how we commute with natural world and and we sing to her in, in all her forms you know so in, in the forest the rivers the the animals you know, the, the insects everything she gifts us really yeah, yeah. 
Mm. So I heard that's missing. And it does sound like almost a simplistic thing, I understand. But also, I think because, like you said, we're so, us in the Western world, I can't speak for everybody, but we're so conditioned to uh, have dance represent itself in very regimented ways. Yeah. For instance, even if I, uh, I took dance classes as a kid, so let's take, let's say even, you know, the dance classes I took, it was ballet, it's very formal. I appreciate the training, it's the way it had to be, but even how, how dance is expressed, how others, you know, sit in the audience and they watch. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's wonderful to appreciate it. But mm-hmm. how we're, we're even like shy, even at the party, let's say, or whatever, we're shy to dance or we're shy to be the first to dance if, some, yeah. if other people are watching or <laughs> it's always like this kind of like a strange taboo-like thing that, you know, it's rare to just be the first person to come and just bring it out and just show yeah. you dance and not care like, oh, how do I look from the side? Let me just, you know, instead of just, just being there, just bringing yeah. this forth. And I think when one person does do it, others notice and they will join in the sheer joy. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this is one thing we're missing as, as, as Westerners. Even though I come from Ukraine, I'll call myself, I was brought up in a similar, you know, (laughs) environment. So this is the one thing that we're missing from the native traditions where Mm. the whole community will participate in this gathering, this this giving to the earth and this ceremony, really it's a ceremonial ways. And Mm. I just, I have to say, like, my heart is aching for it. This is mm. what I would love to have on a regular basis. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Maybe, you know, when this storm is passed, that's, that's what you offer. Perhaps. I, I, <laughs> just one huge, badass, amazing Dakini dance fest. <laughs> That would be great. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. We would all be so up for it. <laughs> Definitely. I need some goddesses to help to birth through this. Yeah. That would be wonderful. Yeah, that would well, be for fantastic. all you girls watching. <laughs> send my email. <laughs> yeah. That's wonderful. So, um I just, you've already mentioned an IU free gift that in, in these times, you yes. know, the, the, the marriage of being in this world, how it is right now and how we can, uh, how can we bring forth the, you know, the lightness to it. So I don't know, would, would you like to say anything else about it? Would you like to give more detail or? Well, I've just called it um, Born Ready. Um, oh, I can't remember the other bit something like afraid of the future so it's like taking those two parts and just spending time recognizing each one breathing into each one and then bringing them together so that you know this solidity starts building inside of you this resilience you know us humans we're so resilient we can withstand this, no problem. For sure, yeah. So like, for like, everyone who's um, watching, I will have the link to the free gift of an SFP on the bottom of the video, so you can just click it and enjoy it. And whatever you need, I certainly will. <laughs> and. Um, so, Anaya, would you like to um, say anything else or share anything else with us? Yeah, I'd like to. Um, well, I did have a plan to come to the US and Canada in August, September. Not sure that's going to happen yet. But if I can, I will. If not, the following year. So, yeah, stay tuned. Love to meet you all. Yeah, that this is so. Was that going to be your book tour for the Fierce Feminine yeah, Rising, or yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, 
yeah well hopefully yeah hopefully hopefully it will happen um uh, at the right time yeah so yeah yeah that's yeah, wonderful maybe. yes <laughs> And so I, I, I guess uh, we're gonna we're gonna close. And I would thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, your beauty with us. And uh, I enjoyed the conversation very much, and I learned from talking to you. Thank me you. Me too. Me too. And thank you so much for putting nature at the center of this summit. I've been on so many, but this one I am fully behind thank you yeah she's teaching us all whether we want to learn or not yes <laughs> yeah thank you thank you for being a part of uh attuning to the mother earth summit and uh, hopefully we'll meet again sometime yeah in person yeah take care you too